Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you because you are forever the same. You are God and you change not. Therefore, none of your people will be consumed. Lord Jesus, we thank you because you are forever the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And therefore, we're believing what you did in days gone by, you will do in every life. No exception. No unfortunate brother or sister. No unfortunate youth or adult. Everyone you'll bless today in Jesus' name. Our children are blessed. Our young people are blessed. Our fathers and mothers, leaders, ministers, we're all blessed in Jesus' name. Come down, Lord, afresh and open our understanding. Help us to behold wondrous, wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. A final, final amen. You can see that we're coming to First Peter chapter 5. And I'm reading some selected verses here. In First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered for a while, make you perfect, make you perfect, establish. Strengthen and settle you. You know, sometimes when you read the Bible and you come across a particular word, and you have always understood that word a particular way, when you read that word in the Bible, you many times do not understand. The meaning of the word in the Bible. You go back to your past understanding. And you go back to the dictionary. What does this word mean? And when you thought you had got the meaning, then you read that meaning into the Bible and say, this is what the Bible means. And you go off. And everything you read after that, you really don't understand. And you miss the blessing of God. God will open our eyes. I will not miss the blessing of God. I read verse 1 to you. In verse 1, there's one word, suffering. I read verse 10 to you. In that verse 10, there's also the word suffering. And then we close our Bible. Suffering, suffering, suffering. As if the whole of life is taken up with suffering. And what do we call suffering? We equate suffering with sickness, with attack, with affliction, with Satan, with the whole of the world against us. 
Look at that verse again. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. The sufferings of Christ. Christ did not suffer sickness, cancer, leukemia, tuberculosis, blindness, deafness, paralysis, sufferings of Christ. He's talking about Calvary. He's talking about the betrayal. And he's talking about what Jesus went through for you and for me. He had nothing to suffer for, for himself, by himself. The sufferings of Christ from the attack of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Not demonic attack, not Christ. Not satanic attack, not Christ. And Peter said, I suffer in line with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was arrested, not sickness, Peter. He was incarcerated, not sickness. We're talking about Peter. He was put in prison, not sickness. What he was talking about is the persecution that came to the early church ministers, pastors, evangelists, and also the apostles. But you know, people stop at that. Look at what follows there. And also a partaker. Also a partaker. I went through the sufferings of Christ. Not sickness, not sickness, not sickness. And then I became a partaker of the glory. What does that mean? When Jesus was tried and tested in temptation, at the end of the temptation, the angel came and ministered unto him. And Peter said, when I was in prison, I saw glory in the night. An angel also came, taught me like this, all my chains fell off. All your chains will follow. And then told me to rise. You will rise today in strength. And then as we are going, I'm telling you I saw glory. I never saw this before. As we were going and the iron door was before us, the iron door opened by itself. We didn't have to hammer it. We don't have to shout. We didn't have to do anything and your iron doors will open. And then I came out. And then I thought, I never saw this before. I thought it was a dream. I thought it was a vision. But the Lord has sent his angel. And all the expectations of the Jews concerning me, everything was defeated. And all the expectation of your enemies concerning you, everything vanishing today in Jesus' name. So you understand, when we talk about suffering, as we look at Paul the Apostle, and then he has told us, he said, she prayed. He said, beat him. And he said, he was in all these difficulties, that's the suffering. No sickness mentioned there. No satanic attack mentioned there. Satanic attack could not come on them because that mage following Paul and Silas, these are the men of God that shows the way of salvation. And Paul looked back, they couldn't attack him. Satan will not attack you. Evil spirits will not attack you. The suffering the New Testament is talking about is a persecution. And he said, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Immediately it came out. And as you hear the word today, 
anything that is not of God in your family, in your personal life, in your career, everything that is not of God, when we say in the name of Jesus, come out, it is gone. And then because of that casting out of the devil from the damsel, they put them in the prison. That's the suffering. It is because of the work of God and because of chasing the devil out, resist the devil, he will flee from you. Those people were angry. But angry people cannot put cancer on you. Angry people cannot put uh, sickness on you. Angry people, they will not make you blind. You didn't hear that one? They will not make you blind. They will not make you lame. They put them in the prison. And in the prison, Hold on now. The suffering of believers, persecution, criticism, opposition, and even if they get, if we get into the prison, do you know you are coming out? You didn't hear? I said you are coming out as they were in the prison understand there are people that think their problems can only be solved when apostle peter comes to apostle paul and silas lays hands on them and then they are free that's the way people think problems are solved solutions come there are people that think you have to carry them to the service and then after the service the pastor or the preacher will see them and then they will narrate a long story until they are almost weeping and the preacher the pastor is crying and weeping with them if i see the pastor cry for me i know i will be delivered Pastor will not cry. Pastor will point you to Calvary. Pastor will point you to the stripes of Jesus. And the pastor will point you to the word, the saint's word, and he healed them and delivered them from all their oppressions. You're delivered in Jesus' name. Paul and Silas. They didn't even cry, and they didn't say, the suffering is too much. They didn't say, Satan, why are you concentrating on me only? Am I the only preacher? Am I the only Christian? They didn't mention Satan. Satan will not have anything to do in my life. They didn't mention evil spirit. Evil spirit will not have anything to do in my life. They didn't say, God, what are you looking at? Some people think when they complain to God and blame God and, you know, cry and all that, they think that's how their problem will be solved. But Paul and Silas prayed and tell me, tell me, Tell me, sang praises unto the Lord. Some people don't know that while the choir is singing, all their problems can vanish away. Some people don't know that when they see those words on the screen, if what they are singing, the melody and the message in the song can loosen everything that ties you. Joshua said, look at all this great problem that has come upon us. 
we cannot handle them. And we do not know what to do. But the prophet came and said, The problem is not yours. Remove your hand. Remove your thinking. And remove your thought. This problem, heaven will fight it. Some people are in the fighting mode all the time. I will fight. I will fight. I will fast. I will do this and that. But how is heaven going to solve the problem if you are fighting, fighting, fighting? You will stop fighting. Your problems will be forgotten. And so, believe the Lord your God. And believe his prophets. Okay, I believe. If I believe, I must do something that shows I believe. How do I express my belief, my faith? He told the singers, get ready. He himself was not part of the choir. He was king. And all the army, they didn't join the choir. They were soldiers. The singers were singing. And then they were following. As the singers got into singing, and they followed the melody of the singing, all their enemies destroyed one another. And so when you come to church, it's not just the preaching. Everything that happens in church, as we're singing, conditional singing, your problems are being rolled away. As the children choir, youth choir, campus choir, adult choir, as they're singing, your problems are being solved. And then when the word comes, he sent his word and he healed them all. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. As you are hearing the word of God, even before we pray, you are delivered in Jesus' name. Today, as we look at the passage that we're considering in 1 Peter chapter 5, I'm talking to you on divine provision and care for God's faithful flock. Divine provision and care for God's faithful flock. We need to understand that from salvation to glorification, from the beginning of our Christian journey unto the consummation, unto the final age of our Christian journey, God has made adequate provision for all needs in our lives. Adequate provision for all the needs of your life. All spiritual needs, all physical needs are provided for sufficiently. Pardon and peace, ours. Purity of heart, ours. Power with God and men, they are ours. Power over sickness, over self, that's ours. Okay, that's mine. Authority over evil spirits and over all situations and all circumstances. Authority over all the storms of life. They are mine. They are yours in Jesus' name. Abundant life. Who has abundant life? The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Look at this. If you didn't have something precious, the thief will not come to steal nothing. It's because you have something. As I'm standing here, I have something. I said I have something. And when he comes, he comes to steal. He comes to kill. You have life. That's why he comes and he wants to kill that life. But your life is not in his hand. And to destroy, if there wasn't anything so valuable, 
what's he going to destroy? I have life, sage. I have eternal life. I have precious inheritance. And I have indestructible heritage. He said, that's what you came to do, but I am calm. How is it? People are only thinking of what Satan has come to do. And they never graduate from that. They never cross over from there. Cross over. He has come. And he has come to give you life and life more abundantly. Your habit in Jesus' name. And we have unlimited answers to prayer. And we have righteousness and holiness. And we have joy and happiness. Anybody having joy there today? It says, ask that you might have joy. As you look at some Christians, it's like the road is raw. The mountain is high. The suffering is unbearable. I'm like Job. I'm like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The fire is burning too hot. No joy. No happiness. I have joy. Jesus said that you might have joy. And that your joy will remain your joy will remain in jesus name and then heaven where am i going where are you going i go to prepare a place for you so that when i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive who is he going to receive? Me now. I said, who is he going to receive? Me. You know, some people, they go through life. Satan does not want me to get to heaven. And the way I'm looking at things, I don't know. Don't finish that sentence. God knows what you don't know. I will get there. I said, I will get there. You have children. If you don't have yet, you will have. And you are packing from one house to the other. And as you are packing from one house to the other, do you leave any of your children behind in the old house? Jesus came here. He led the earth, the old house. It's gone to heaven, a better place, a more beautiful place, the home on high. Is he going to leave any of his children behind? He will not leave you behind. I go to prepare a place for you. So that when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. Heaven, I'm getting there. You will get there in Jesus' name. And has given us all things to enjoy. All things to enjoy. We're not only conquerors, we're more than conquerors. We're looking at the word of God on divine provision and care for God's faithful flock. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the purposeful feeding of God's precious flock. The purposeful feeding of God's precious flock. Point number two, the promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. The promised exaltation. Are you ready for exaltation? 
the promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. Number three, the princely care, not ordinary care, the care like God is looking, you, looking at you like a prince, and the kind of care that befits a prince, the princely care of Christ's prayerful friends. The princely care of Christ's prayerful friends. Point number one. What's point number one? Say it, say it now. Our feeding on the word has a purpose. We come to church, hear the word of God. There is a purpose. We read the Bible in our houses. There is a purpose. We take the word of God, feeding. There is a purpose. The preacher feeds on the word. The pew the members will feed on the word. Every time, everywhere, we feed on the word. Feeding on the word has a purpose. We must not feed and remain faith. Feed and remain feeble. Feed and remain faceless. Feed and remain weak you will not remain weak look at chapter 5 verse 2 feed the flock which is among you feed the flock which is among you you can testify that in our church here our preachers our ministers our sectional leaders in every meeting at every opportunity that's what we do Feed the flock of God. Let's come to John chapter 21. Reading from verse 15. The last line of verse 15. Feed my lambs. The last line of verse 16. Feed my sheep. And the last line of verse 17. Feed my sheep. That's what we do from the lambs to the sheep, from the members to the ministers, from the children to the youth to the adults. That's what we do. We feed the lambs, we feed the flock. Chapter 6, verse 34. John 6, reading from verse. 34. It says in verse 34, Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. That's what Jesus did. He fed the people with the word of God. And that's what we're doing today. Feeding the membership of the church with the word. Verse 63. 63. It is the spirit, the quickness. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The purpose of the word. The power of the word. When that word enters, it will act like a reviving spirit. It will act like a renewing spirit. It will act like the spirit that comes to you and you are resurrected. Every weakness will be taken away from you. And in that verse 63, it says, the words are lies. If you have any weakness, if you have anything dying in your life, when the word comes in, you will come alive. And today, you come alive. 
I come alive. I come alive. The purpose of feeding, purposeful feeding of God's precious blood is meant to revive you. It's meant to resurrect you. It's meant to enlighten you. It's meant to show you light and it's meant to make you strong. You eat, you become strong. Feed, you become strong. And the word normally without another thing. You know, sometimes when you're hungry, almost fainting, no stress, totally weak, and then you're called, it is supper time, or breakfast time, or lunch time. And then you take that food, and you drink water on it, the weakness is gone. Am I right? And all the fainting, you know, everything is gone. The same thing with the Word of God. When you eat the Word, when you take the Word, and the water of the Word refreshes your life, you will not be the same again in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. How many people in the flock? How many people are we feeding in the flock? Tell me now. All the flock. Are you part of this? And the purpose of feeding must be fulfilled in your life. And know over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. To feed the church of God. Feed the church of God, which he has purchased with the soul of blood. The flock purchased with the soul of blood. Many people don't talk and see they know that they have been purchased at a high price. From where were they purchased? We cannot just say from society. There was somebody that held you captive. Wanted to waste your life. Wanted to destroy your life. And you were helpless. You were his property. And now Jesus, with his blood, came and snatched you out from the hand of that one that held you captive. And he purchased you with his precious blood. He purchased you from whose hand? I said he purchased you from whose hand? I can't hear you. From Satan's hand. And he has not decided, and he will not decide, I purchase you because you are precious, and I purchase you from Satan's hands, I throw you back to the devil. Is he going to do that? How are you going about? Are you saying, Satan will not leave me alone? I thought you are purchased. I thought you are rescued. I thought he had redeemed you, and you are no more a property of Satan. Look up at me here. I am not a property of Satan. Even the ears on your head are all numbered. The fingernails are all numbered. And every part, every cell in your body, but chased by the Lord, you will not go back to Satan. Yeah. The flock of God, whom he has purchased with his own blood, feed them, feed the people of God. When we are fed, what's the result? When we are fed, what's the result? Jeremiah, reading from verse 3. 
Jeremiah chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. I will give you, tell me, pastors according to my heart. If God gives us any pastor at all, he gives us pastors according to his heart. If somebody chose another person and God is not involved and he says, go pastor that church, if God's hand is not there, if it is by the choice of the people, if it is by campaign, if it is by lobbying, give us a pastor and give us Mr. So and so. And that Mr. So and so is giving to them that so and so is not according to the heart of God. But when God decides to give us a pastor, that pastor will be according to his heart. We shall tell me, feed you with knowledge and understanding. Feed you with knowledge, the knowledge of what Christ has done, the knowledge of who Christ is, the knowledge of the power we have because of Calvary, the knowledge of uh, chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. When you find the words of God, and God gives you a leader, a pastor, a teacher, and he teaches you the word of God according to his mind. You find that word, you eat that word. You will be strong. You will be righteous. You will have assurance. You will stand with stability and strength. You will be like the rock. You will not be moved in Jesus' name. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy words was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. How can you come to the house of God and you hear everything the Lord has provided for you? From the word of God and you eat the word and you are still sorrowful, you are still sad, you are still crying. Other people are going home rejoicing. You are outside there and the ushers are holding you while you are, you know, making a noise and shouting and crying. I am miserable. They didn't allow me to see so and so. You are not miserable. You are not taking in the word of God. As you take in the word of God, joy will come to your life. Your failure will turn to success. Your sicknesses will go. And all the infirmities and all the power of Satan against your life, they are broken in Jesus' name. Thy words were found. And I did eat them. And Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I am called by God's name. I said I am called by God's name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 4. Jeremiah. Chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 4. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. I will set up shepherds, plural, plural, not only here at the central church, in our districts, in our groups, in all those locations, shepherds that shall feed us. 
shepherds that will feed us. Look at what follows. Verse 4. I will set up shepherds over them. We shall feed them and tell me. Tell me. They shall fear no more. Just the word. We're not talking of prayer now. We're not talking of calling anyone. We're not talking of sending an SOS to God just by feeding on the word of God. Because whatever the word says will be done. Whatever the word proclaims will be achieved in every life in Jesus' name. And just feeding on the word of God, they shall fear no more. In your life, no fear. In my life, no fear. In your family, no fear. In your place of work, no fear. When you hear the word of God, you understand that the almighty God determines every detail of your life. Enemy cannot, the enemy cannot decide any detail in your life. If they try, they're wasting their precious time. Your life is in the hands of the Almighty. They shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. You will not be dismayed. You will not be confused, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord, says the Lord, says the Lord, who said you will not lack? I said who said you will not lack? The almighty God that said it, it is done. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107, I'm reading from verse 20. He sent his word, tell me, he sent his word, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. You are delivered. You are healed. That's the word. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. You are healed in Jesus name. Feeding on God's word. Gives us faith. And faith quenches. All the fiery darts of the wicked. Feeding on God's word strengthens our confidence. And when you have that confidence, you walk like a child of the king. Like when we finish the service today, you'll walk like the child of a king. Untouchable. Unconquerable. Unbeatable. Unstoppable. Feeding on the word of God gives us assurance. No doubt. No uncertainty. We feed on the word of God and we have assurance. We have hope. We have peace. We have purity. We have power. Anybody having power today? You have power in Jesus' name. We have light. We have life. We have abundant life and eternal life. We have joy and joy unspeakable. We have steadfastness. We have stability. We have courage. We have fearlessness. We have triumph. We have victory. We have all desirable blessings. And we have all spiritual benefits. You become a possessor of the heavenly inheritance. You have it. You will not lack. 
Your family will not lack. Your children will not lack. Your parents will not lack. Abundance in your life through the word in Jesus' name. Point number two. The promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. The promised exaltation of Christ's humble followers. Let's come to First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. Giveth grace to the humble. Have you noticed there the two sets of people there? The proud. They lose a lot. God receives them, keeps them at arm's length, at a distance. But the other group, the humble, God gives us more grace. God give you more grace. Verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, 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 because of what he will give to the humble. Because of what he will do to the humble. Because of the exaltation is bringing to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. You will not be under the mysterious hand of Satan. People talk too much about Satan. They think too much about Satan. They plan so much about Satan. They research so much about Satan. They ask too many questions about Satan. They know more about Satan than they know about God. If the wind is blowing, look at Satan there. If there is a cyclone, look at Satan there. If a cat is uh, moving in the dark and the eyes are kind of gazing on an object, look at Satan there. If the wind closes the window and then there is sound at the window, look at Satan there. If there is any kind of uh, thing they don't understand in the society, look at Satan there. They don't see God anywhere who is omnipresent. They don't see Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. They only see Satan. Satan will not be around you. Satan will not be on the roof of your house. If there's any sound there, it's either, you know, something electronic is sounding there or the wind is blowing something there. The wind is not Satan. Satan will not be on your roof. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. You'll be under the mighty hand of God. That ye may be ex that he may exalt you in due season. I see exalted people here. I said I see exalted people here. Concentrate on God and look at God and be under the mighty hand of the Almighty God. He will exalt you in Jesus' name. Now, let's come back to this idea of suffering, suffering, suffering. Many people don't understand. Even if you are suffering, do you know that humility alone, humility alone can reverse your suffering. 
You didn't answer me. Look at First Kings chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21. I'm reading here, open the chapter, chapter 21, chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 21. First Kings chapter 21, verse 21. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee. I will take away thy posterity. I will cut off from Ahab him that pieces against the wall. And him that is shut up and led in Israel. And then he goes on and on. Verse 27 now. And it came to pass when, tell me, he had heard those words that she wrenched his clothes and put sack clothes upon his flesh and fasted and lay his sack clothes and went, tell me, he had went softly and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying seest thou how Ahab humbles himself before me he humbles himself before me because he humbles himself before me I will not bring the evil in his days. You see that? God has said, go tell him, wicked man, wicked Ahab. I'm going to destroy him. I will do this and I will do that. Even though Ahab was like looking at Elijah as an enemy. Have you found me? Oh, my enemy? Yes, I found you. Because you sold yourself to do evil. Hear the judgment of God. And when he heard, he thought about it. He went softly. And God said, Elijah, look at Ahab. I didn't expect this. He humbles himself before me. Because of that humility, I'm going to give him grace. He will give you grace. And all the evil I pronounced against him because of the humility, I will not bring it again upon him. Just, just be humble. Many problems are solved. Just walk softly in the sight of God. Many of the things we are complaining about, on the one hand, the word is coming unto you, and the word will heal all your sicknesses. On the other hand, you are humble, and because of that humility, your healing is already confirmed. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Maybe you don't know how to fast and pray, but if you humble yourself. Maybe you don't know how to quote many verses of scripture. If you humble yourself. Maybe you don't understand all those mysterious secrets of curse, Satan, evil spirits, this and that. But if you just humble yourself, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray the way they know how, and seek my face the way they know how, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. The voice of every humble person will be heard in heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. It will heal your family. It will heal your body. 
It will heal everything that is aching in your life in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 16. Genesis chapter 41. Verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh. Hold on. Remember, Joseph, we're talking about suffering. That man suffered. Not sickness. Joseph, that man suffered. Not venereal disease. Joseph, that man suffered. Not attack, affliction of Satan. Persecution. His brothers sold him. And they sold him to slavery. And then Potiphar's wife told a lie concerning him. Potiphar's wife could not bring tuberculosis on him. That's not the suffering. Could not bring sickness on him. That's not the suffering. Every time some people hear suffering, 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 they think about sickness. Joseph suffered, but he was not sick. You are well. I am well. You are well in Jesus' name. You must change your language. You must change your understanding about suffering. Now come to chapter 41 verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, It is not in me. God shall give a Pharaoh an answer of peace. That's humility. And Pharaoh said, I've heard of you. And I want you to demonstrate what I've heard. That you are able to interpret dreams. And whatever you interpret, that's what my cupbearer told me. And that's what my baker, that's what they said about the baker. That what you said was fulfilled. Now come, show me. And he will not allow any flattery. And he said, no, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Is that pride or humility? I said, is that humility or pride? Humility. Look at the result. By the way, Joseph had a dream. And that dream, the persecutors of Moses, they wanted to drown the dream. Kill the dream. Kill the dreamer. He will not succeed. Your enemies are liars. He will not come up. All they say negative about you will go into the dust and dustbin. You will come up. You will rise again. They think of selling him to Egypt. They thought that was the edge enemy will not end your life yeah. look at it now we're reading from this chapter 41 verse 38 verse 38 and Pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph. And Pharaoh said unto, what's your name? And Pharaoh said unto, what's your name? Promotion has come. Exaltation has come. All the suffering of persecution and denial. Everything is coming to an end today. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so district, discreet, 
and wise as thou you'll have divine wisdom thou shalt be over mine house and according unto thy words shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou and Pharaoh said unto who and Pharaoh said unto who and Pharaoh said unto Joseph see I have set thee over all the land of Egypt humility brings exaltation and as you humble yourself before God hold on humility doesn't mean you surrender yourself to the enemy the enemy is coming hey man they said we should be humble and then you roll in the dust under him and that one is cowardice. That one is fear of man. That one is not humility. You stand your ground in the presence of him. And somebody tell me, give me a good amen. Yeah. Amen. Enemy of righteousness. Enemy of the Jews. Enemy of progress enemy the one bragging and said i will finish him if you bow and bench because Haman said i will finish him that one is not humility that one is fear i'm afraid they said they will finish me but they cannot finish you look up at me here can they finish me any sin that cannot finish me cannot finish you. You know how old I am now? You will be as old as I am. Older, older, older in Jesus' name. They will not finish your life. They will not finish your destiny. But, 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 in the presence of God, you humble yourself, exaltation will come. You are exalted already. You are promoted already. I want you to look at First Corinthians. Chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles. That's Paul. I am the least of the apostles. Is that pride or humility? Tell me, tell me. No bragging. No flattery. No pride. I am the least of all the apostles. And I am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. That's humility. Look at the exaltation. God will exalt you. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, you will be what you will be. The promise of God will be fulfilled in your life. The young will grow. The downtrodden will be exalted. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be delivered. The sorrowful will become glad. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And the grace is grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. All this that you are hearing will not be in vain. The pronouncement of God concerning your life will not be in vain. 
every promise of God for your life will not be in vain. He says, says, grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Your life will be more productive than all the people you have read about in history. Yet not I, that's the humility there, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. You know, if you have heard about the law, physical laws, the law of gravity, and the way I can explain that, I'm sure you understand, throw anything up, the law of gravity will bring it down. Is that right? The law of gravity works because God sets it up. And God has set it up. Anyone who throws up himself, who exalts himself, he will come down. There's another law. It's the law of sowing and reaping. You take the seed. You put it in the ground. It cannot go lower than that. And then that seed that is down will come up, will grow up, will bear fruit. And the fruit will be profitable for society. It's a law. Put it down. Humble yourself. Hide yourself. Don't be proud about anything. And as you humble yourself, like that seed comes up. I see you, you'll come up. Like that seed bears fruit. I see you. It's a law. It's a law. It must be fulfilled. You will bear fruit in Jesus' name. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. You have a testimony? The Lord will put testimony in your mouth in Jesus' name. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up in due season. He will lift you up when? He will lift you up, I said when? James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. He giveth more grace. Wherefore, he says, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. But stand, humble yourselves, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. He will lift you up. When God says yes, nobody can say no. Don't think about your background, about your family, about your village, about what happens to cousin, happen to brother, happen to sister. God has singled you out. He will lift you up in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The princely care of Christ's prayerful friends. First Peter chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 7. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting how many cares? All your care upon him, for he careth for you. You know, don't go about saying, I have nobody. You have God. You have Christ. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the promise of God. You have the power of the Holy Ghost. You have inheritance in heaven. And you have your Savior 
the Spirit, the Comforter, abiding with you. All your cares are taken care of. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. He calls your friends. Look at John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 13. John chapter 15. We're reading from verse 13. Look at this. Greater love has no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Look up here. Let's say somebody was in the prison. He has been sentenced to life imprisonment. And at the end of that life imprisonment, they're not going to allow him to die peacefully. They're going to take him and they're going to kill him in a violent way. But now somebody comes and he says, I'll pay the price. Whatever he has done, I will undo it. And then he released him from the prison where he had life sentence. After coming out of the prison, now he needs a piece of bread. The person who paid the high price to take him out of the prison, Will he give him, can he give him a piece of bread? Of course. Now he needs clothes to clothe himself. The one who has taken him out of life imprisonment, can he give him clothes to wear? Of course, yes. He needs accommodation, a room somewhere, a shelter. And the one who has uh, redeemed him and bought him and paid the price to get him out of life imprisonment, will he give him shelter? The Lord Jesus Christ has bought you, redeemed you, and taken you away from life imprisonment, from eternal suffering. And he paid for the price of his precious blood. Will he give you breakfast? Will he give you clothing? Will he give you success? Will he give you prosperity? Will he give you anything you need? He will. And he calls your friend. Jesus calls me friend. Jesus calls you friend. Somebody is harassing somebody. Rough handling him. And they want to strangle him. And then a soldier, brigadier, general, armed to the chief, is coming along and he looks at people that are rough handling somebody. And he looks at the person they are rough handling. And he says, why? That's my friend. Will he just pass by? Leave him in the hands of those who want to take life out of him? Jesus is the power of heaven and earth. Jesus is the one that conquered Satan. On the cross of Calvary. And he said, it is finished. And he calls you friend. And he's passing by. And he's looking down at all the people on earth. And he sees somebody there. All the evil powers. All the evil spirits. Even though they know they are defeated. They are trying to rough handle you. And Jesus looks at somebody there who are there of handling and he says, that's my friend. Any friend of Jesus there? That's my friend. Any friend of Jesus there? 
That's my friend. Will he turn the other way and allow Satan to destroy you? No, never. No, a million times he will not allow it. Look at this, John chapter 15, verse 14. Yeah, my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father have I made known unto you. I am his friend. I said I am his friend. Luke chapter 11. In Luke chapter 11, I'm reading here from verse 5. Luke chapter 11, reading from verse 5. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? I shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine. In his journey is come to me. And I have nothing to search before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet, yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him, tell me, he will rise and give you. He will rise and give us as many as we need, as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, is your friend? It shall be given unto you. Seek, is your friend? You shall find. Knock, knock at the door of your friend and it shall be opened unto you. I am blessed. I am blessed. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely, freely, freely give us all things? All things are yours. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 6. In Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 6, here it says, Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be fearful for nothing. And be worried about nothing. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. After that prayer, look at the result in verse 13. 
I can do all things now through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Verse 19, but my God shall supply, but my God shall supply, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. All things are yours. All things are mine. All things are mine. Psalm 55, verse 22. Verse 55. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy body upon the Lord. Don't carry your load yourself. Don't carry the body yourself. The body of a sick wife. The body of a wayward child. The, bo the body of lost job. The body of oppression. The body of suffering you couldn't explain before, but now you can explain. Cast thy body upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall sustain thee. This sin will not destroy you. He shall sustain thee. This sin will not take life out of you. He shall sustain thee. This thing will not kill you. He shall sustain thee. He shall never allow for me to suffer the righteous to be moved. You will not be moved. And you will not be denied. I shall not be denied. I shall not be denied. Since Jesus came and made me free, I will not be denied. In Psalm 61, Psalm 61, verse 2. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry, will I call and pray unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, when my heart is overwhelmed, when it appears the water is getting into the boat and is filling up the boat and the water is seeping into my heart and the sorrow is getting into my inner man and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You'll come out of that sea. Out of that ocean. Out of the deep waters. And whatever has tried to overwhelm you. The Lord, where are you now? I said, where are you? The Lord will take that hand you are raising up. He will lift you up out of the sea. And he will lift you to the rock that is higher than yourself. Higher. 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 Where are they? Higher. Where are they? Higher. I rejoice with you. The trouble is over. The suffering is over. The overwhelming deluge of the devil is over in Jesus' name. Higher. 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 Tell him, he'll lift you up higher. Tell him, tell him, tell him, he'll lift you up higher. 
Hi, no problem he cannot solve. Hi, no soul he cannot save. Hi, no depression he cannot take away. Hi, no suffering he cannot remove. Hi, no problem he cannot solve. Hi, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me, lead me, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. What a privileged person you are. What a precious person you are. What a blessed person you are. Higher. He lifts you high. Make sure you are saved. Make sure you are born again. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you enough to forgive all your sins. He loves you enough to forget all your transgression. He loves you enough to lift you higher out of the dungeon of sin. And he brings you to the mountain top. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Sin will not have dominion over you. He came to save you. He came to set you free. He came to deliver you. He came to redeem you. Lead me up. Lead me up. You are no more overwhelmed. Lead me higher. Higher than where I have been. Higher than all my enemies. Higher than the things that overwhelm me. Higher than every challenge of my life. Higher than every problem that confronts me. Higher. Your boat will not sink in the middle of the sea. It cannot happen. When you are overwhelmed, cry unto the Lord. Who oh, lift you, lift you, and lift you high, higher. Sickness? No. By stripes, you are healed. He sent his word. And he healed them. The word strengthens us. The word heals us. The word delivers us. The word takes the pain away. The word removes the plague. The word performs the miracle. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. The word has come to you. When that word enters, feebleness will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. Receive the word. Have it in your heart. Believe it in your heart. Hold on to it in your heart. Feed on the word. Feebleness will vanish away. Fear will vanish away. 
fainting will vanish away. Sickness will vanish away. All those powerful enemies, they'll be driven back from your life. Eat the word. Believe the word. Hold on to the word. Meditate on the word. Accept the word. That word will cancel every sin of the devil from your life. The word brings life. Receive it. Abundant life. Receive it. Eternal life. Receive it. A good life. Receive it. The word brings strength. Supernatural strength. Victory. Triumph. Stability. The word brings fearlessness, courage, and every spiritual blessing and benefit. The word makes you a possessor of heavenly inheritance. Humble yourself before God. Judgment will vanish away. Seest thou Ahab walking softly? How he humbles himself. I will not bring the judgment that I threatened anymore. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, humble themselves, humble themselves, and seek my face, and pray, and turn from the evil way, I will hear their prayer from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Humility brings healing. Humility brings forgiveness. Humility brings release from judgment. Humility brings answers to prayer. Humility brings promotion. Humility brings exaltation. Humble yourself in the sight of God that He may lift you up in due season. He has shown thee, O oh man, what the Lord requires of you that you will love mercy. And walk humbly, humbly, humbly with thy God. He that exalts himself shall be abased. But everyone that humbles himself will be exalted. Bury the pride, 
live humbly before the Lord. Don't act like a coward before an enemy, before Haman, before a child of Satan. Don't act like a coward. Stand your ground. But in the sight of God, humble yourself. Live a life of meekness. In your language, the meek, in your posture, the meek, in your interactions, be humble and meek before your fellow brother, your fellow sister. Be lowly, be meek, be humble. And then God will exalt you. Give you strength and power. Give you assurance. He is by your side. And He will solve every problem you present unto Him. Casting all your cares upon Him. Casting all your cares upon Him. Casting all your burden upon Him. Casting all your headache, heartache upon Him. He cares for you. He'll wipe the tears away. He cares for you. He'll take the burdens away. He cares for you. He'll take the sorrow away. He cares for you. He'll take the sicknesses away. He cares for you. He'll break every chain and every fetter. He cares for you. He'll remove every curse, every burden. He cares for you. He will meet every need. He cares for you. He'll give you strength, power. He cares for you. He will undo everything the enemy might have done in your life. He cares for you. Yes, He cares. Yes, He cares. Casting all your body all your care, all the heaviness of heart, burden, cast on him. The Lord is for you. And the Lord is with you. And underneath you are the everlasting arms. He cares. He will not leave you in the middle of the night, he cares. He will not leave you in the middle of the ocean, he cares. When there are no other friends around, he cares. When the heat is much more then you can bear, he cares. In loneliness, he cares.
and you recover whatever you have lost. He cares. He cares for you like he cares for a princely friend. He cares. Like he cares for an intimate friend. He cares. Those waters will not overflow you. Will not overwhelm you. Will not drown you. And the fire of Nebuchadnezzar will not burn you. There's someone who cares for you. The Lord has answered your prayer. The Lord has seen your tears. He has wiped all your tears away. The Lord has taken all your bodies away. He has solved your problem. He has healed your body. As you go out now, you go out in the joy of the Lord. I am blessed. Where is he? Where is she? You are blessed in Jesus' name. Father, what a caring father you are. What a loving father you are. What a merciful father you are. And what a body bearer you are. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. You have wiped the tears of your people away. You have taken the sicknesses of your people away. You have taken their bodies away. Brother, the Lord has answered. Sister, daughter, your problems are solved. It's made your light now in your heart. The sorrow is gone. The heartache is gone. The word has fed you and now you are fearless. The word has fed you, you will never be dismayed. The word has fed you, death will run away from you. The word has come to you and all your sicknesses are healed in Jesus' name. As you walk humbly before the Lord, the Lord will lift you up. The Lord will exalt you. The Lord will promote you. He'll make you higher than your past. Higher than your enemies. Higher than your opposers. Higher than your dream. Higher than what you ever thought you will be. The word of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord speaks unto you now. Come up higher. Like Joseph, come up higher. Like the blessed of the Lord, come up higher. God has said yes in your life. The enemy cannot say no. All the bodies you have bodied upon the Lord, cast upon the Lord, He has rolled them away. Cry no more. Be sorrowful no more. Don't talk about problem anymore. Everything that overwhelmed you, the Lord has wiped away. He has taken your bodies away. He has taken your sorrow away. He has taken all the heartache away. Go now in the joy of the Lord. The Lord has put a testimony in your mouth. 
Laughter in your mouth. Joy in your mouth. As you go, people will see the glory of God upon you. Higher. 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 Remain on high. And nothing will decrease your blessing. It is confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.